Welcome back Freshwater Fishing Novices. This is Freshwater Fishing Novice Friday. My name is Moles and this is the Freshwater Fishing Novice YouTube channel. This week I'm going to do something a little bit different. This past week I got a bunch of comments and questions and uh, I figure instead of answering those via messaging, I'm just going to make a video. So stick around. You're going to see some problems that people are having and I'm assuming other people have these issues as well. So I'm going to answer these questions in this video. So stick around. We're gonna learn some stuff, answer some questions, and at the end of the video, I got a special treat for you, so stick around to the end. Not gonna tell you what it is, but it's definitely worth sticking around to the end of the video, guys. All right, freshwater fishing novices. First comment I got, and question, is from Max. So I'm gonna pop that up over here. So what did Max say? Max said he's very much a novice fisherman. He started in his 30s, just found my channel, and he says it's entertaining. Thanks, Max. I'm glad you're, in, you're entertained. I'm trying to be entertaining because who wants to watch some boring dude, right? Not me. I haven't had much luck catching anything. Then he asked, do you by chance have a video on what lures need baits? So no, I don't, Max. The short, short answer is no, I don't have a video on that. Oh, but I can just really quickly answer that pretty simply. There's a lot of terminology for tackle. And it's easy to get lost in it. So Max, yeah, termin the terminology is kind of a bear to figure out. Anyway, I know I had to bumble through it. So let's see if I can make it a little easier on you, buddy. So Max, lures and baits. They're, I would say they're interchangeable, but they're not. So baits always going to be live. And lures are artificial. Artificial plastic or composite, possibly balsa wood. Lures artificial bait live so worms night crawlers mealworms uh what's another one maggots if you were going to use a bait you could use like uh real fish just depends on this, the rules in your state so hopefully that demystifies uh the difference between lures and baits max thanks for leaving a comment dude thanks for watching my channel i hope i'm helping you man uh i started much later than you fishing so good news you're gonna be better at my age, when you hit, get here, which I'm not going to tell you how old I am, but you should be a much better fisherman by the time you hit my age. All right, buddy. I hope that helped out. Thanks, Max. The next comment I got was from Solomon Crates. Here's his comment up here. Check this out. Solomon said, hello from Virginia. Hello from not Virginia, buddy. I heard it's for lovers. Yeah, I'm sure your significant other knows about that. He said he's not a novice, but he enjoys my channel. So that's awesome because that means I'm reaching people that aren't just novices. So I'm glad you're watching my video, Solomon. It says you're not pushing products and you just enjoy fishing. Well, I'm not here to push products. I'm, I'm here to help you guys learn how to fish or become better anglers. That, that comment kind of struck me. And uh, if you guys see me talk about rods and reels and stuff like that, if you want, if you want me to, I can tell you what I'm using. But really what I'm going to tell you is the specifics of the rod. So then you can go out and buy whatever brand rod you want. But you can kind of base it off of the power, uh, the action. You know, if, you, if we're talking about rods. Uh, if I show you a lure, not a bait. Uh, if I show you a lure and you say, hey, that's pretty cool. Or whatever. It's, I'm not going to give you a name unless you guys want me to. So if you really want to know... The baits, not the baits, damn it. If you want to really know the lures, you just leave me a comment in the video and I'll, I'll address that for that video. I'll message you right back. So that's, I'm not trying to sell products here. I'm trying to get you guys on to fish. Solomon, the last thing he said was keep up the honest work. Thanks, dude. I, I just, I'm just trying to do, I'm just, the reason I started this YouTube channel is because I couldn't find anything to teach me when I was starting and it was just confusing. And I know Max is having that problem. Solomon's already probably intermediate at least, uh, but trying to make it easier to fish. So Solomon, thanks a lot for commenting, dude. I hope you like this, uh, this video. And I hope the fishing in, in Virginia is amazing. I, I'm pretty sure it is. From Virginia, Solomon, thank you very much for commenting. The next comment I got, was from a woman 
named Allie Mae. And here's her comment. My dad fished a lot as I grew up. He's given it up. He must have caught all the fish. Now I've picked it up with my son, six years old. So that's an awesome age. Six to 10 though, it's an amazing age. Oh, she said her son suddenly got the urge. It's probably watching YouTube channel. And Look at these guys, they're crazy. They're catching all these fish. Well, listen buddy, so a few things you don't know about YouTube is we edit out all the stuff where you don't see us catching fish. And you guys need to see that we're not always catching fish. Sometimes we'll be out there for 12, 13 hours and we catch four fish. Or sometimes like on my speed challenge, I went out and I caught six fish in 30 minutes. It just, it's just practice. You're just practicing fishing and just getting better at it. So just like everything else, little buddy, practice makes perfect. Allie Mae says, we have yet to catch anything, anything we can eat. See, all the junk ponds near us have been taken over by been taken over by bullheads, which are catfish. I mean, you can eat a catfish. I don't. You just got deep fry it, right? So you could eat a catfish if you wanted. Catfish nuggets, properly breading and frying it. I mean, you can watch my catch and cook with the rock bass. Same thing applies with other fish. You can bread it and deep fry it the same way, and it's probably going to be fine. Allie may ask, what's my favorite? Bait. So what I talked about with Max, or just a second ago, baits live and lures are artificial. So what I like to use for panfish is artificial. So I messaged her, and, but I figured I'd throw it up in here for everyone else that's watching. My go-to, hands down, number one lure for panfish is going to be a trout worm. It's a two and a half inch worm. There's a picture right here. I'm just going to pop that in. And, uh, and then we'll go back to Allie's comment. So you can see that trout worm. The reason I like the white ones is because when they'll just come up and whack that thing. As soon as you see that white worm disappear, it's in a fish's mouth, you set the hook. The other lure I like to use for panfish is gonna be like a little tube. So there's a picture of that. A bunch of different companies make these guys. You can just pick out whatever you want. My favorite color by far is that white and yellow though. I don't know why, but the fish hammer it. I mean, uh, Rock bass eat it, uh, I've caught bass on them, trout, uh, and big bluegill. So, something about the way they drop, they always do this death spiral, and then the fish just go and hit it. So those are my two favorite lures for catching panfish. Hallie also said, I know they're supposed to be easy to catch, but we haven't succeeded yet. Ha! Well, Hallie, don't give up. Um, the only other thing I would say, or address, or ask you if I could, would be, I want to know what kind of rod you're using to catch panfish or trying to catch panfish with. Now, you might be using a rod that's a little heavy. I don't know. I know when I started, I was using a, a medium rod, uh, moderate action. A medium rod's good for bigger fish. A panfish, though, for, for panfish, you want to use a light rod, like an ultralight rod. When I catch panfish, I'll go out with either, you know, a six foot to a seven foot ultralight spinning rod, size 10 spinning reel. It's pretty small. So that's, you can see how small that guy is right there. Well, I always try to steer people when they're fishing for panfish into the ultralight category because you're going to be able to feel it. And as you're starting out, that's probably the most important thing is feeling that. It's going to be really forgiving too because you're going to set the hook and it's going to bend right over and it's going to feel like you're fight, fighting a larger fish even though it's a, a panfish or a bluegill or, you know, just a small sunfish. The other thing I would suggest for your line, I would go with like a four to six pound monofilament. It's got great stretch. It's gonna be more forgiving um, and it's cheap. Allie May, I hope that helps out. Thanks for subscribing and watching my channel. I hope that uh, you and Little Man are gonna actually catch some sunfish. There's still bluegill out there to get. All right, thanks Allie May. So the final comment I got is from Bonafide Tarzan. I like the name. He's fishing mainly creeks in East Tennessee. So that sounds pretty awesome. I wouldn't mind doing that. Water's ever changing, color, depth, etc. He started teaching himself to fish a year or so ago. So awesome, props dude. It's not easy teaching yourself stuff. I mean, there's a lot of learning curve and stuff like that. So you're constantly doing research and all this other stuff. So I know, I feel your pain, dude. So hopefully this channel's helping you out a little bit. He says by far, rock bass are his favorite. So. I'm 100% there with you, dude. They're great for fishing novices to go out. If you want to step up from panfish to a larger 
fish. It's still in the fa same family as the sunfish, but they're just bigger. So obviously more fun. I, he's having trouble with the muddy water. So let's talk about muddy water. If I was going to go fish muddy water, not very little visibility, what are the problems? The fish can't see as well. Limited visibility, right? I want to let those fish know where my lure is. Oh, I'd want to use something that throws off a lot of vibration. Spinner bait, addle tail, soft uh, swim bait on a, like a one odd or three odd hook, bullet weight in front of it. Something that's going to create commotion. I'm also going to throw something that's very visible. So like a white, anything white or chartreuse. It's something that's going to create a lot of commotion so the fish can feel that. Whatever lure you're using that's causing vibration. Spinner bait's going to have either double willow blade, which is good for flash but not in muddy conditions, I'd be throwing a double Colorado blade, which is like a round blade. This is what I would suggest to Bonafide Tarzan. When you're fishing muddy water, you want a brightly colored lure that creates a lot of commotion to let the fish know where your lure is. They're gonna feel that vibration and that commotion against their lateral lines. It's kind of how they pick up on stuff. And hopefully that's gonna increase your hookup rate, at least getting the fish's attention. And catching fish, when they bite slash getting a good hook set it's because they're small school fish or schoolies, I guess. I, guess, I think they're just bait fish is what uh, Bonafide Tarzan is talking about. They nibble his bait. So yeah, that's probably a smaller, smaller sunfish. Just kind of your bait might be too big. Even now I'll go out with a, I'll go out with one of these guys and these little panfish will just start pulling off these flanges. Sometimes they'll rip one of these guys off. So that's a little annoying when you're trying to go for a bigger fish. If your lure is getting nibbled, but you're not hooking up, you can always downsize. Also having a hard, uh, tough time identifying largemouth and smallmouth. Good news, right here. So there's a picture of a largemouth on top and a smallmouth on bottom. Now what you're looking at right there is where the mouth comes in relation to the eye. A smallmouth bass, that mouth doesn't reach past the eye. The largemouth, the upper jaw extends past the eye. You just wanna look at the mouth Really, if the mouth set farther back than the eye, that's a large mouth. Right there. And where's my small mouth? Right there. So you can see that mouth right there, and the mouth right there. Small mouth usually have a, a red eye, a brown, yellowish, where a large mouth, you're gonna have, a, it's gonna be a lot more green. It's got that lateral line you can see right there. Anyway, you can see it in that picture too. Bonafide Tarzan, I hope that demystifies largemouth and smallmouth. You, now you'll be able to tell the difference between largemouth and smallmouth. He also says he could also use a video on different line types or different types of line. So that actually is gonna be a full video. You know what, I'm gonna make that video. So next week when you guys tune in on next Friday, next week's video is gonna be on the different types of line for fishing. So make sure you tune in for that next Friday. And he said, thanks moles. Bonafide Tarzan, thank you. And he said he double subs, so double thank you, dude. That's awesome. You're helping out my channel. You're helping it grow. I appreciate that. I appreciate all you guys watching. I appreciate all the comments you guys have left. If you have questions, specific questions I haven't covered, you can leave them in the comments. And if you're not subscribed, there's like 12% of my viewers are subscribed. That means there's 82% that aren't subscribed. Just hit that bell notification. Make it turn from red to gray, that little bell. You'll be subscribed. It helps my channel out. It's going to help other fishermen. The other thing you could do is, if you know someone who's fishing, like and share with your uh, novice buddies. So, as promised, here's something that you guys haven't seen on my channel yet. Oh, that's a big fish. Holy.
Holy sh Holy sh the big fish. Holy guacamole. Is this thing on? Oh. That's my that might be my PB. Holy crap. No, what? That is not right. Ooh! Yeah, four pounds, baby. That is amazing. That might be my PB. Holy smokes. Come on, dude. Yeah, come on. Four pounds, baby. That was amazing. I made my day. F yeah. That's right. You guys like that? I know I liked it. Talk about uh, getting your heart racing. Ecstatic doesn't begin to explain how pumped I was. Obviously, I had to edit out a whole bunch of swears because I was freaking out. That has to be my uh, PB for the year. Woohoo! All right, guys. Thanks for watching the Freshwater Fishing Novice YouTube channel. My name's Moles. It's been Freshwater Fishing Novice Friday. Go ahead, like and share. Subscribe if you're not subscribed. I don't know who you guys are, so I can't really call you out on it, but 82% of people aren't subscribed. Hit that bell. Turn, turn it from red to gray. Help this channel grow. When you subscribe, what it does is it puts me higher in the YouTube algorithm so other people can find my videos and hopefully become better at fishing. If you guys have any comments, questions, specifically about how I can help you learn how to fish and become a better fisherman, or if it's about lures or whatever, line type, anything. Any questions you got for me, leave them in the comments below. I'll respond. I mean, I just responded to all four of these guys, and I made a video about them. So I want to thank Ali May. I want to thank Solomon Crates. I want to thank Bonafide Tarzan, and I want to thank Max. Thank you, three gentlemen and a lady, for commenting. It really helped me out. It put some perspective on what I'm doing here. I hope you guys liked this video this week. It was for you guys and also for all the other freshwater fishing novices. Thanks for watching. Hope you guys have a good weekend. I'll catch you next week.